Folks, there was a time when a ready-to-fly racing drone was kind of a contradiction in terms, and there are still many ready-to-fly quote-unquote racing drones on the market today that are simply not worthy of the name. They're mere hangers-on. Uh, they have the form of a racing drone superficially, but they have none of the performance. And there are some ready-to-fly copters that get close, and the one I'm thinking of here is the uh, the Vortex. The Vortex was the first racing drone that I thought was even worthy of coming close to that name. And uh, if you've flown a Vortex, you know it flies pretty well. But the definition of a racing drone has really evolved. Uh, racing uh, drones have become a thing. They, they've taken on a certain shape. This pure X shape that you see me holding here is what you see most of the winners flying. They've gotten lighter. It's not enough. A mini quad is no longer synonymous with a racing drone. And that's why I am pleased to show you today the quad questions. QQ190 ready to fly RTF. This is a ready to fly racing drone and quad questions motto, their slogan is anyone can fly. And their goal is to help people get over the hurdle, the learning curve, that it takes to get into this hobby. And that learning curve is substantial. And in that respect, I kind of identify with quad questions. In my YouTube channel, What I, I say that what I try to do is to help people get over that exact same learning curve. Once you're over the learning curve, this is an amazingly enjoyable hobby. But while you're getting over the learning curve, it is incredibly frustrating and many, many people give up before they get there. And that's a shame. So I feel like quad questions and I are kind of on the same mission. And that's why I have a special soft spot in my heart for this copter. I've often had mixed feelings about ready-to-fly copters uh, because they don't force you to learn how to build. And since you don't know how to build, you don't know how to repair. Uh, I had a conversation with one guy on my YouTube channel who said that he has 10 copters uh, ready-to-flys that he bought. They're broken. They're sitting on his shelf. And each time he breaks one, he doesn't know how to fix it. And eventually he buys another one. He breaks it, and etc. And that's a real shame. I mean, for one thing, he's wasting a lot of money. Uh, and for another thing, he's, you know, it's just a shame that when something sim probably simple breaks, he just doesn't know how to get into it. And so when people say, hey, what does it take to get into this hobby? What do you got to spend? And I, I could say, well, spend 500 bucks on a ready-to-fly, but they're just going to break it. And then what are they going to do? But uh, when I reviewed the Gobi 180, the thought that I had was that a ready-to-fly doesn't have to be a disservice. A ready-to-fly can be a great template for how a really well-built copter is supposed to fly, which is an experience many home builders have never had. And they fly a properly built copter and the lights go on and they're like, oh, well, this is what it's supposed to be like. And the other thing is that a ready-to-fly can, can get you started while you're learning to build. I often say if you buy a ready-to-fly, immediately start buying parts for your build and be building a copter while you're enjoying your ready to fly so that eventually you will learn to build. You have to learn to build if you get into this hobby. But I've got to tell you, this copter comes as close to anything I've seen to being a sort of solder proof, a solder less copter that someone could maintain. Let's take a look at the parts. The motors are Quad Questions branded T motors. Now T motor makes uh, various motors, some very good, some uh, not as good. Uh, these are 2205, 2400 kV. I do think that 2400 kV is an interesting choice. I've often felt like a 5040 prop is really the best prop for sort of all around, uh, certainly for handling and tunability, uh, maybe not for raw speed. But I feel like 2300 kV motors really underutilize a 5040 prop. And so 2400 kV is going to give you just that little bit more top end speed, just a little bit less torque. Maybe it is a real sweet spot between the 2300 kV that's more common and the, to say 2600 kV that I've got on my uh, main freestyle copter, which is QAVR. The electronics on this copter are a TBS power cube with FP Vision video transmitter and OSD. And you may be looking at this and going, wait a minute, that doesn't look like the power cube I've seen before. And the reason for that is that it's not. This is a new two in one BL Heli S ESC. So these two middle uh, boards are the, two, the, the four ESCs, and I don't actually think they're available yet on the market outside of this package, although maybe they are. I'm sure if they are, you'll let me know in the comments. On the bottom, we've got the FP Vision uh, OSD and video transmitter, and on the top, we've got the flight controller. And all in all, it just makes a really nice and compact stack, right? Not, not too much height, low CG. If you've got a, a high-def cam here up on top, the CG is not going to get all crazy. 
Really nice compact stack. Four boards, all the electronics that you need. The Power Cube is the reason I say that this may be the first RTF that I've seen that you almost could own without being able to solder. Because if anything breaks on the Power Cube, it's a simple matter of taking these nuts off and replacing the board that broke. The motors have bullet connectors and the ESCs come with bullet connectors on them. So if you do break a motor, you simple matter to unscrew the motor, un take it off, plug it back in, good to go. I can't think of anything on this copter that you would need to be able to solder to actually fix. Now, now granted, you might be able to do a better job repairing something if you could solder, but if you didn't know how to solder and you absolutely didn't want to learn, you could simply buy and plug in a new parts of essentially whatever broke. In keeping with the TBS theme, the antenna it comes with is the TBS Triumph, and this may be certainly one of the most popular, uh, but if you listen to Alex Grieve, I'd be crazy. Uh, this is also one of the best antennas on the market today for FPV. Granted, he designed the antenna, so he would say that, but no, he's a, he's a very good antenna designer, and all the guys who fly this antenna surely know what they're doing, so no skimping here on the antenna. I wish that I could say the same thing about the camera. The camera that I've got here, it's a CMOS camera. It was selected to be light and low profile for the build, but unfortunately, it's terrible. It's as bad as every other CMOS camera that you've seen me pan. That's the light handling, the exposure, the dynamic range, everything about it is bad. Uh, I consider it to be unflyable. Uh, you can fly with it, but especially if you're a beginner, there are enough times when it's just going to go completely black and leave you flying blind. And as an experienced pilot, I and, and flying at my house that I fly at all the time and that I know like the back of my hand, when that happened to me, I was able to compensate and not crash and not fly it into a tree or a puppy or a baby. But for a new pilot, and remember, this is targeted at people who are new to the hobby, that camera is going to betray them and they shouldn't have it. Well, the good news is I gave that feedback to Quad Questions and they listened and the copter will be available with the option to upgrade to an 1177 style camera. And if you buy this copter, you, you should take that option seriously. Just take that option, okay? Like if you absolutely have to just nickel and dime the purchase, you can get away with this camera, but if you, if you at all can afford it, definitely get that option. Upgrade the camera for sure. Lastly, the props that come on it are HQ5040 tri-blades. And you can tell from the color, these are the Schizo branded props. And they're pretty decent. Uh, you know, I like 5040s a lot. I, they're my favorite prop to fly and to tune. And I feel like they fit really well, especially with higher KV motors. On lower KV motors, they make a little bit less top end speed and thrust, but they're very, very tunable. And I feel like this is an ideal prop to put on a copter, especially for a beginner for whom ultimate speed may not be the goal, but a, a nice flying copter is a little bit more desirable. Well, since I've got the scale right here, and since I know you're wondering, let's go ahead and weigh it. It comes in at 320 grams without the battery. So mm, let's say 450 grams with the battery. Now that is very respectable. Uh, a typical home build is going to come in between 500 and 550. Now that's with a high def camera. So let's say this is on par, maybe a little on the light end of par for a copter like this. Obviously, if you look at the top tier racers who are building their own copters and shaving them to the bone, uh, you're going to see them coming in lighter. But for, for a ready to fly, I think that's a very, very respectable uh, and continues to earn it the right to call itself a quote unquote racing copter. The other question I know you're wondering now that I've piqued your interest is how much does it cost? It's going to retail for $450 as you see it here. And if you go for the HS 1177 camera upgrade, it'll be another $30 on top of that or $480. You'll receive the copter almost identical to how you see it here. It comes, the antenna is not installed and the props are not installed. Also, the receiver is not installed. It comes with a pigtail pre-installed for an S-Bus receiver. And then it's just a matter of plugging in the S-Bus receiver and finding somewhere to stick it down in there, but it's very, very simple for someone to get it uh, in the air. So there it is. It's the Quad Questions QQ190 Ready to Fly Racing Copter and um, $480 with the camera upgrade that I recommend. Uh, very nice uh, carbon, very nice build, uh, and you're going to see more of how it flies uh, on my channel. I'm going to be doing some tuning videos for it. In fact, Quad Questions asked me to specifically do like a pro tune for this one, and I, uh, I'm very honored to be asked by them to do that. 
Uh, so you're going to be seeing that coming later in the channel. Uh, but for now, that's all I have to say about this copter. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.